Hello everyone. I am fortunate enough to live in beautiful Cape Cod. We, we have a lot of lighthouses and today we're going to do a quick, loose watercolor lighthouse. I'm featuring Nauset Light and there are, it's a tourist spot, so there are tons and tons of photos online. So what I did is I, I went there, it's five minutes away, if even that, because I'm in East Ham, and shot a bunch of photos. And up close and personal, this is what she looks like. So the ones I found online, you have to be really careful not to violate copyright if you use a photo that you find online. So usually what I do is use a photo as a reference. Uh, don't necessarily trace it. So I found this photo. I think it's really, really old. I love the moody sky. It's, it, it's a nice layout. It's The horizon line is in the right spot. Everything is perfect. So, except for it's blurry. It's really blurry. So what I did is I went into my computer in Photoshop and I grabbed this one, my Jenny Fall photo, and grabbed this photo, this found photo, Frankenstein them together so my lighthouse is sitting in this background. So the first thing I do is I do a really nice tracing. just to kind of simplify the image. So I put the tracing paper over and just trace it so that you end up with something very simple. Then to make it a little bit more clear, I, I do the Xerox. And the Xerox, I can adjust the contrast so it's really, really easy to see and easy to, easy to trace. And then I use Sorrel paper, transfer paper, and put it down on my board. You can see I've already masked off this lighthouse using my masking tape and I will use drawing gum to mask off the rest of the areas that I do not want the background to, to cross. So hang in there. I'll be right back. All right. Everything is masked off. And just so you know, when you're using this drawing gum, you want to get a, an old brush that doesn't mean the world to you. And you want to get get it wet and really, really soapy so that the gum doesn't stick to your brush. Then once everything's dry, we can get started on this background. Now, what I love are all these colors. I see cobalt blue, I see violet, I see orange and yellow and a little bit of red kind of a pinky red. So I've prepared my palette with basically all the colors, some yellow and orange and some red, and then some Scarlet Lake with a little opera violet. Got a little Prussian blue and a little fight. Oh, I just can't, I just lost the word. Thalma. <laughs> all right, forget it, Antwerp. <laughs> And then I've got some green going on here. So the first thing I'm going to do, everybody's all sprayed, ready to go. I'm going to wet my paper and I'm going to grab a giant brush. This is a 16 round. And I'm angling it so I can see what's going on. The water's slightly dirty, so I can maybe see a tiny bit. But I want to get quickly get everything wet. And I always have to cross my fingers that I don't have a blowout with my masking tape. Some paper, you want to test your paper first. Make sure it's not going to peel up your paper. Because some paper, this is Arches, which is a little bit, a little bit friendly with this masking fluid. All right, so quickly... I'm gonna, just gonna play around with some of these light colors. And I 
I gotta tell you, it's it's really just intuitive. Oh, that nice pink. More of a pinky orange, kind of diagonal here. Some underneath up here. Grab some more yellow. Looks kind of cool just like that. Then I'm going to get some, this is kind of ultramarine and cobalt. I like to go darker at the sides. Kind of silhouette. Now I'm going to mix a little pink with my blue for this kind of moody area. And now we're bringing in some violet. And then you can see it's kind of grayed out. So I'm going to add some Prussian blue into the violet. Add a little Payne's gray into the mix. And just kind of introduce it and let it bleed. You can really use your Kind of nice to, to do some diagonal brush strokes. So I really like how things are bleeding and merging and how the yellow orange kind of vined into the green background. I also went back with some of my darker some of my green that had a little bit more Payne's gray in it and just added definition to the little path and under some of my little highlights. So I think what we need to do now is under these little clouds, I need to add a little bit of shadowing because the bottom of the clouds are usually a little bit darker. It just shows dimension. I'm nervous to do it over here. And I'm just taking a dry brush and sort of mushing. Okay. Oh, not bad. Not bad. All right, let's do it. Liking it, liking it a lot. Okay, time to add in some greenery over here. Looks like we're pretty dry. Let's just do a tester. So I'm gonna want some pretty dark, maybe milk slash cream. Let's see. And I'm just gonna let my brush kind of dance. Oh, I need it to be darker. There we go. And I'm putting in some shadows below. I'm gonna leave, have some different heights. And I'm leaving a little bit of space for the indication of trunks. There's a dog hair. I need some 
more shadows here. Then I let that dry a little bit, but meanwhile, let's grab some brown. Van Dyke brown with a little bit of Payne's gray. I'm going to use a rigger. Might be too wet. Not bad. Then I'm going to grab my little teeny tiny brush. I'm going to go real dark. And while it's still wet, Add some super dark, super dark. Okay, stop for now. Might as well put some greenery right in there. We're gonna cheat a little bit. All right, let everything dry. Before I unveil the part that's masked, I want to darken this grass a little. It got, it's pretty, but it really lightened up. It's one of those things you think you're going to get used to with watercolor, but you just never do. So I'm just going to... I love to dry brush. Using the side of my brush. You can hear it scratch scratching. I'll just add some depth. Okay, I'm scared. I'm scared. Let me stall some more. All right, no more stalling. I'm gonna grab my trusty palette knife. Where is it? Here it is. Because my fingernails are <laughs> rubbish. Drum roll. Oh my God, I didn't have any bleeds. Yay! Yay! Trusty rubber cement pickup. You can use your fingers too, but I still have my rubber cement pickup from the good old days. Ooh, it's wet. That's not gonna be any good. That would could be a mess waiting to happen. Just gently and try try an experiment on your paper before you do this. I can't tell you how many times my paper has torn when I'm lifting my mask. So this is Arches and it seems to be very friendly with the mask. Oh, here we go. Just kind of going in a little circular. I don't want to smear my watercolor in the background. It's so hard for me to wait till things are dry. Sometimes I smear a little bit. Is this dry? Yeah. The reveal. I wouldn't have necessarily had to mask off these trees but I, I wanted the little little bits of white highlight to peek through and it tends to look more organic if you just let the mask do its thing and let the paint do its thing and there we go all right now 
very dark kind of greeny blue. And you can take a little artistic license here. What I'm gonna do is grab my hooker's green, which is very clean. And I'm gonna dirty that sucker up. Some orange. And I'm gonna grab some indigo. And some paint gray. Let's see how that does. And I'm just going to kind of dance. Tap, 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 tap. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my trusty old mixing brush. It's probably 50 years old. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not that old. It's probably 20 years old. And I'm going to... You can, you can take a, a normal paintbrush and just splay the ends. But I love my mixing brush. It's stiffer, stiffer bristles, so it comes in really handy for getting your paint woken up. I'm going to use a couple of different shades of green in here. I'm going to have to go back in and add shadows, and I'm leaving little bits of white. Those nice highlights. Boy, I'm using a lot of Payne's Gray in this exercise. I always prefer Payne's Gray to straight black. Now, the bushes actually kind of continue. I think I need a bit bluer. I'm going to add some of that into these shadows. There we go. Okay. I'm going to grab a small, nope, small brush. And I just want to get some little tiny leaves. a little more organic. Should we do that over here too a little bit? Why not? Ah, another dog here. Just adds a little dimension. Now I'm going to go back with a nice dark brown. So I'm going to take my Van Dyke brown, make it very buttery. Tiny brush. Then I'm going to, the brush is just damp. Add a little shadow underneath. Okay. I think I'm gonna do the same thing over here. go in. I'm just making this up. Throw in some branches. Makes things kind of hold together better. Nice.
All right. Let's see. I've already kind of got a little shadow down there. And add some shadow in here. I could use my rigger to do that. All right. I do believe it's time to let this dry and move on to the lighthouse. Okay, stop fussing. I almost forgot to turn my camera back on. I've gone in with some dark, just to break up, add a little detail to some of these trees because they got kind of a little bit flat. Just a little indication of leaves. And I think now we are dry enough to work on the lighthouse. Now in, oops, that's, that's my, that's my blurry photo. Oh, well, you can see there's kind of a highlight along each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the red comes down. Oh, that's weird. I traced my window up way too high. Oh, well, we're redesigning the lighthouse. So I think I'm going to change it up so that my, my red comes down to here. How did I do that? Oh, well, <laughs> I'm definitely not copying anything. So my water is nice and dirty. I'm gonna drag some shadows across here. And feel free to turn your page. It's kind of hard to see when you wet things down. I need a little bit of a warmer sort of a buff. I think, oh, I like this little flat brush I have. Where did it go? Ah, here we go. It's not flat, it's more of a chisel. But let's. Then I need to add a little more shadow. Oh, that's pretty. To make this thing look cylindrical. So now I'm going to damp brush. What I'm trying to do is carve a highlight right here, but I think my shadows are a little too light to do that. So let's grab the teeny brush. We'll try it off a little bit. Now we're talking. I'm gonna have to flip my board over. So I don't drag my hand through the trees. Okay. Oh. 
a little better. Need a little bit more shadow. All right, damp brush. Okay. Nice highlight. Now we're talking. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone for now. If I have to cheat and add some white for the highlight, then so be it. Clean that up. Now for the red. Let's go with, looks like some alizarin crimson and scarlet lake. I would use cadmium, but cadmium is very opaque and I, I don't want this to be opaque. Uh, a little dusty. I'm gonna use a little brush. My hand is not, <laughs> my hand's a little shaky today. I had a little too much caffeine. But my head right on the camera. Making myself a coloring book. My pencil lines are very faint, which is a good thing. That brush is almost too small. Oh well, I'm not in any rush. Grabbing a little bit brighter red. The center tends to be a little brighter. Then the side is a little shadowy again. I can always drop in shadows. I don't know why I'm whispering. Okay, let's get some. Some dark and mysterious. Kind of dark up here too. So what I did is I took a lizard and crimson and some brown. I hope you can't see in my head. I'm very, I'm going very kind of shy and careful about these shadows. I 
Am I still on screen? All right. Now I want to carve out a highlight. Hopefully it'll work better on this one. Nice. Great, that worked out great. Great. Now I have to let things dry. And I think I'm gonna resketch the bands, the seams. They have seams and then there's a big side seam here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get ready to do that and I'm gonna do save the scary part for last, <laughs> all the detail. Hang on. All right, for the shadows of the seams, I'm gonna go very, very light, kind of grayish. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I should be using my rigger. Oh well. Now I'm going to just take a damp brush mush it a little bit The pencil's almost enough as is I'm gonna hit it with a, some little white highlights too later. It's a little darker. All right. Now, oh, there's a little, Oh, there's two seams up here. Okay, let's test my white. Now I'm gonna kind of This, this is kind of just watery white. I want to break it, break this up a little bit. There we go. Okay. I am nervous to do the black. All right. Almost out of black. Start with the windows. as I paint off screen. Normally I would have this pressed right up close to my eyeballs, but I don't want you to see my head. Oh, I have to, hold on, I've got to finish this. I've got to put my face right up to the paper.
didn't know I wasn't filming. All right, the only thing left to do, I need to clean up the window a little bit and I am just gonna go in with some black ink. I have these awesome black ink pens. Here's one. Tombow brush pen. Perfect. So as soon as that's dry, I'm going to clean it up. Is it dry? No. <laughs> Let's hit it with the dryer. Just guess who's not patient. Clean up duty here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think we're done. Oh yeah, I better sign it. Leave you up here. All right, what do you think? Let's take the tape off. I think this is a lot better than the one I did that took me about three hours. I love the sky. Unbelievable. Perfect border. I usually wipe out at least once. Oh, to have fingernails. So let me know in the comments below. And if you paint one yourself, please, please tag me at Jenny Fall on Instagram. I'm eager to see. I'm probably going to clean up the white a little bit more. The white is looking very, very blue white. So I think I'm going to go back in with a little white gouache. But basically, it looks pretty good. <laughs>